Which 3D pen should you buy? What's the best 3D pen? Well, it all depends on who you're buying for. For example, think about these two cases. Are you buying the pen for a young adult who's never used a 3D pen before, but may grow into more advanced use of the pen? Or are you buying the pen for a young child where safety is a key concern? Because those two people have very different needs and should end up with two very different 3D pens. In this video, I'm gonna help you break down the most important features based on who you're buying the pen for. And I wanna highlight the features and options you should be paying attention to when shopping. As a bit of a teaser, here are some buying guides that I put together for you, which should make your research a bit easier. I also made some lists of current 3D pens on the market, comparing a whole range of factors, such as speed settings, temperature controls, and of course, cost. And just to be clear, I was sent some of these pens free of charge to evaluate and test. I was sure to note which ones in these lists. So I'll talk more about all these shopping aids later in the video. If you do end up buying a pen, be sure to check out my tutorial series on how to use it. I have tutorials ranging from the absolute beginner to advanced users. I'll put links to those at the end of the video and in the video description. Okay, so I came up with three major groups that I felt would be buying or using a 3D pen. These groups are young and casual adult users, high-end users, and young children ages six and up. So for young and casual adult users, I felt the important factors for this groups are the ability to grow into a pen if desired, the ability to use a wide variety of plastics, also called filament, and being able to get up and running quickly and easily. For high-end users, this group will want all the bells and whistles, like full control over temperature settings, specific extrude button setup and controls, as many speed settings as possible, and the ability to use a wide variety of filaments. For young children, some of the chief factors to consider when buying are safety, ease of use, getting up and running quickly and easily, and whether the pen has an internal battery or not. Before I go into detail for each group, I want to say a word about cost and 3D pens. Cost is one of the biggest factors for most people. At this time, I'm seeing low-cost pens flooding the market. This makes it difficult to test out every pen on the market, but if I educate you on the right features to look for, hopefully you'll be more successful in your 3D pen shopping. For cost, I again stress taking into account who the pen is for. If the pen is going to be used infrequently, then you can find lower cost pens that will serve this need. But you can also find dirt cheap pens that will work for about five minutes and then break. So low cost buyer beware. If you think this may be a hobby that will stick, or you want to maximize the chances of a child having a good experience, and spending a little more money may be the way to go. Okay, let's look at each of the different groups in detail. The first group is pretty broad and covers young adults and casual adult users. Here we want to strike a balance between ease of use versus having room to grow their skills with a pen if they want. Fewer controls and settings will keep the learning process simpler. So I recommend pens with just a few speed settings. Two or three seems to be a good number for people just learning. Another important item is to make sure that you get a pen that can use both PLA and ABS plastic. This really opens up the options for the types and colors of filament you can use with the pen. It definitely gives the owner room to grow with it. I also highly recommend using PLA filament over ABS because ABS has some health risks with long-term exposure. ABS can be used, but proper precautions need to be taken. If you search YouTube or Google, you can find suggestions on exactly what precautions you need to take. I've generally seen three ways the temperature settings are dealt with. The first is a fixed single temperature setting, meaning there's no adjustment at all. You just turn the pen on, it heats up to a fixed temperature. This is often done in the cheapest pens and is often only for ABS filament, so be sure to watch out for this. Pens usually clearly call out whether they work for multiple filaments, so if there's no mention, they probably only work for one type. The second is fixed dual temperature settings. These usually have ABS and PLA temperature settings that you can toggle between. The final method is complete control over temperature settings. These usually have a digital display and you can select the temperature value in one degree increments that you want the pen to heat up to. Finally, it's really nice if a pen comes with good instructions, some PLA filament, and some templates to get started with. 
This is especially key for people brand new to 3D pens. In the list I mentioned above, I included a room to grow category, which basically includes some of the 3D pens for high-end users. If you think the person you're buying for may want to grow into an advanced user, or is able to navigate the additional features with no trouble, these might be some good pens for them. Let's now move on and talk about those high-end 3D pens in detail. Frequent and high-end users will want full temperature control over their pens. They want to tune the exact temperature they're using for each filament to minimize the weeping and leakage of the pen during use. A subtle point for high-end users that I discovered when testing all these pens is the implementation and control of the extrude button. I found this is typically done in two ways. Some pens make you click the extrude button once, which locks the pen in extrude mode. And then you click the button again to stop the extrusion of the plastic. Other pens allow you to press and hold the extrude button and release it when you want to stop extruding. The click to lock in place makes it really hard to do short bursts of extrusion and make small or fine features. The hold and release setup is much better for this. Advanced users also want as many speed settings as possible because this gives them the maximum flexibility and control when creating a model. Finally, keep in mind that being able to use any 1.75 millimeter diameter filament is a big advantage. Most 3D printers use this diameter filament, so that means there's a huge selection of filament available, which is key. Now we can talk about the final group of 3D pen users, young children. This is the category I have the least experience with as I haven't personally used any 3D pens specifically designed for small children. But I will take you through the process I would use based on my experience if I were going to buy a pen for a small child. And that experience does include having two young children of my own. I'm going to talk about three 3D pen models which I believe have been specifically designed for young children. These are the Mint 3D Junior, the 3D Simo Basic, and the 3D Lure Start. Other 3D pens just throw children into their literature, but that doesn't mean they're truly safe for kids. I'll compare and contrast these three pens with ones from the other groups so you understand why I focus on them. So safety has to be the number one factor here. 3D pens can have hot tips, which are pushing out molten plastic that can burn you. If a kid gets burned, they're probably not going to have had a fun time. I'd be looking at pens that have specific safety features meant to prevent this. These pens use a different type of plastic that melts at a lower temperature. This greatly reduces the chance of a child being burned when using these pens, which is great. In addition, this plastic is billed as non-toxic in case of accidental consumption. But keep in mind, these special plastics limit where you can buy them, and you most likely will only be able to get them from one source. And you'll pay more for it. So just make sure you're comfortable with this prior to buying anything. The next most important factors are ease of use and getting up and running quickly. That means fewer buttons and less functionality on the pen. Many pens have five or six buttons on it, which is just too complicated. I would not buy one of these for a young child. These kid-specific pens have anywhere from one to three buttons. That kind of simplicity will make it nice and easy to get going quickly. Finally, these three pens have internal batteries. The reason this is important is that other 3D pen models require the use of a power cable or external battery pack. This drags on the top of the pen and can disrupt what you're creating. It does take some practice and time to get used to. Having the internal battery makes these much closer to a normal pen, which means it's easier for a young child to adapt to using it. Before I close out this video, I want to talk more about the shopping aids that I made for you. Links to everything I show can be found in the video description. The first aids I made are these checklists. I broke these out into the three different groups so you can print out the specific group you're shopping for. These let you compare three pens and reminds you of the important features to look for. Next are the spreadsheets I made which will allow you to compare the various 3D pen models on the market today. I looked at all the factors that I've been talking about in this video, things such as speed settings, whether it has an internal battery or not, what materials can be used with each pen, and so on. I again broke them down into the different groups that I've talked about in this video, but I also included the full list of pens that are available if you want to look at that. There is an instructions tab in the spreadsheet, so be sure to look at that first. Whew, that was a lot of material to cover. I hope you found it useful and that it helps guide your search to buy the best 3D pen. 
Links to most of the pens are available in the video description, so check out the ones that interest you. And remember, I also have general 3D pen tutorials to help people get started and steadily improve their skills. I'm always releasing more of my own 3D pen creations as well as additional tutorial videos, so please subscribe if you want to see any of that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.